The topic of validation seeking is so sobering because in many ways it shines a light on a very hidden part of ourself that craves more. More love, more beauty, more money, more tension. And in the desire and desperate seeking, it also reveals our lack. The emptiness that we feel becomes a dark room. We lock ourselves inside and ask for others to shine a light through the window. And then we openly express our frustrations when the light, although is bright, is never bright enough to fill our space, never bright enough for us to see ourselves. And this remains until we empower ourselves to see all of the power we were giving others over us and also the power that lays dormant inside of us until we flip that switch and start to validate who we are and the way that we feel and who we want to be. In this video, I will share my eras of validation seeking in ways that I've won, in ways that I've lost, in hopes that whatever I'm saying will be of service to you. So, let's get started. Before I received this little pocket of awareness, I found myself validating my worth by the way others treated me. If you didn't walk me to my car after a date, if you didn't call me back, if you didn't include me in the plans, if, if you made a joke about me, all of these little things at a special time in my life were big deals and I felt they warranted big reactions. It was all misplaced anger and a lack of accountability to the part that I played in my own suffering. Assuming that if those special people in my life, the people that I designated to fill my needs were not actually surrendering to my needs at those given times, I would be completely without forever. Not only is that not true, it's not their responsibility to meet my needs 100% of the time. When we are insecure, it's human, but when we don't do the work to move past it, we start to seek security in others. It's like if you have an open wound and you expect the people that love you to use their hand as a band-aid. Not only is it not our human function to protect your wounds in that way, but you're infecting yourself and wasting someone else's time, assuming that they're gonna hold their hand to your wound forever. Now don't get me wrong, there are amazing people that come into our lives and adjust our crowns and show us a light in moments and times in our life where we are feeling a little dim. But to give us the will to be better, to stand firm in our own beliefs, to validate and advocate for ourselves, to like what we see when we look in the mirror, that's our job. Honestly, I had to stop putting so much in people's hands. If I am not the first to honor myself in the ways that I feel like I deserve, how can I set a clear example for how I feel others should show up for me? It's when we're clear on what resembles love or when we're clear about what is best for us, it's our responsibility to remove ourselves from anything that does not align with that. Because when you know your truth, sometimes you have to take a step back and realize why am I asking for the right things from the wrong people? Why am I asking more from others and less from myself? Another token that I've received over the years is that I think until we receive what we desire from ourselves, we will never really truly know if what we want is attainable, nor would we be able to recognize and accept things that we receive from others. Have you ever met someone that uses the negative opinions of others to validate the good things they feel about themselves? I've been in spaces where no matter the age of a person, if they are insecure in the silence of others, it's because they fear that that silence will reveal their insecurities. They have to be the person to speak and the loudest, and usually what they have to say is a joke or something inappropriate, something to really get the crowd moving. And then they have to make sure that everyone is laughing at it. And if you're not laughing, they found a target in you. They fear your ability to see their truth or how small they actually feel. When you're mostly quiet in spaces, it's such a power because it gives you the benefit of seeing clearly your surroundings to make a decision if this is actually a space you need to be present in or not. It's really an act of survival. But in this environment, because you're the one that sees past the performance and because of their inability to manipulate the narrative from you, 
they can use the minds of the other people that they can manipulate as a power to make you the bad guy in hopes that the person who can actually see them the clearest disappears. They don't want anyone to challenge their beliefs, who they are, or what they perceive to be real. The only thing that matters is their perception. They don't want anyone around them that they can't control. I think usually in life, there are people who talk, there are people who listen to the people who talk, and then there's also people that are observers to what's actually going on. Maybe they're able to see the person that's talking a little bit clearer. Maybe they see the person that's listening as actually someone that's not really able to hold space or hold people accountable. Maybe there's a fear there, but it's always dangerous to be that outside person. It's always dangerous to be that person that sees above the situation en enough to know that, hmm, this person is probably saying these things because they feel insecure. This person is probably too busy talking about others because they fear all of the work that they need to do to bring attention to their own lives. And it's very hard existing in that space because you have this desire to want to be the change or want to make change, but change doesn't happen without the discomfort of others. Even for yourself, it's hard to exist in spaces where you actually want community, but you realize that because of a person's frame of mind, they will probably never be able to be open enough to see how small their actions truly are, or maybe how hurtful they could have been or are being, or how whatever they're saying or doing is probably normal to them, but it's a trickling negative effect to the other people around them. Although it is a hard space to be in and it does feel like you're kind of the buzzkill of the place, I want you to find maybe better ways of articulating how you feel because we see it from a certain level of awareness. The harsh reality of maybe bursting a person's bubble is like apparent and it's real. It doesn't mean that what we're doing is wrong. It just means we have to do a little bit more work to be the bringers of awareness. And it's our responsibility to do that with grace and humility and understanding and um, genuine love. And I think when we are frustrated with the task, it's hard for us to exist in those spaces. For me, I just, I was so fatigued with that. I just wanted to tell it how it is. And it's as much as you think you're doing a service to the world, you're not. You just are being rude. You're not coming from a loving place and people can tell, people can see that and that's something that you also have to develop in your skills of communication. Just being honest. I think self-advocation and finding your voice is key for validation. For so long it was our caregivers and our parents' responsibility to validate our characters when we just did not communicate how or we were not aware of how to. I think self-advocation and finding your own voice is clearly the most important part of validation. Because if you are not able to speak up for your character and validate yourself and your truth, who else will? I think so often we are used to the adults and our caregivers at having the responsibility to validate our character and speak for us when we just don't really have the voice or we have not developed ways to communicate who we are. And I realized I had to speak up more or I had to find my voice when I realized that the people that kind of I felt were responsible for validating my character or speaking up for me did not know me. It was my job to validate and speak up for myself and I had to develop clear communication skills in order to do that. I had to reach a point where, you know, at the end of the day, no one is going to advocate for my truth and stand up for me as much as I am or as well as I can. You can know people from top to bottom. People can know you from top to bottom, but they can still not be good communicators and you would not feel comfortable with them speaking on your behalf. And because I would often get disappointed with people that I was good to or people that I thought knew me well just did not know how to defend me in the presence of people that 
maybe didn't like me or just didn't know me or they were just not able to know my intentions well enough to speak for me in certain spaces and I had to realize you know it's not their job to validate me I have to do the work to find my voice and communicate it so thoroughly that at least if they don't necessarily understand my side or who I am it's not because I didn't tell them When you are truly present in your day-to-day and busy forming a life for yourself, you hope people see good in your intentions, but at the end of the day, wasting your time convincing others who you are is not the way. I realized that I stopped seeking validation from others when I was okay with them being wrong about me. We have to allow time to be the testimony of our lives and our legacy so it can speak for us. I'm going to be a villain in someone's story. I can't please everyone. I can't make everyone like me. I'm kind. I'm respectful. But the courage I have to be able to have humility and stand up for myself and others if it is needed can be problematic. And I have finally made peace with being okay with that. And I hope you do the same. So it all comes back to us. I can't change the things that people say about me when I'm not in the room. I can no longer waste my creativity developing stories of what could have been done for a person to understand me better, see my intentions clearer, or just see the goodness in me. I'm no longer going to waste my creative thoughts and energy on people that are just not going to get it. So what changed for me the most is that I had to train myself through the fear of actively expressing my truth, no matter what people felt about I think this is a very deep ancestral trauma that most people of color or people in general should heal or get to a point in their life where they're tapping into. Because for a very long time, our truth did not matter. We had to seek the validation and the acceptance of our oppressors to survive. And I know it's probably my ancestors' wildest dreams that I'm able to stand in the rooms, be the only minority woman, and be the most hated because of the principles that I stand on trigger their own personal bias. And most importantly, I can leave those rooms with my integrity and my life. So I will be validating my experiences for the rest of my life. And if I did not know how to do that, I don't know where I would be, how far along I would be. And I do it to also give others the courage to see an example of it just being done. And to also show others that the consequence of validating yourself is never worth more than your dignity, than your pride in who you are, and everything that you know. Your truth is valuable and worthy of validation, even if it is on your own. And at the end of the day, it would be a betrayal to myself to wait around for the world to look at me one day and validate all of the complex things that go on in my body, in my mind, in my heart. What do you think? Are you truly and genuinely comfortable with the hat of being the villain in other people's story just to be the hero in your own? Let me know in the comments. I think all of the great series of events that kind of helped me see past my validation seeking was truly because I knew that there was a younger version of of myself that would be totally proud of the queen that I am becoming. When I was a little girl and I was having some of my hardest days, what kept me resilient through the trials of my life at that time were my own sci-fi fairy tale fantasy ideas of me just genuinely being an alien princess seated here and every trial that happens in my life is just in a preparation of me to one day be a queen on another planet and that was really what kept me going it was a little weird but it kind of worked i had no idea how far my life would go or become or i don't i had no idea that i would actually have the courage to just genuinely be myself to so to see me actually just walking in my own path and trying to heal as much as I can so I can be as light as a feather for whatever's to come, I'm truly proud of that. Now granted, it was a little weird, but it kept me going, you know? What's something that keeps you going? Let me know in the comments. Um, I think that is all that I have today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting me to 10k and I really do appreciate all of your comments. 
all of the messages that I get on Instagram. You guys have no idea how much it really means to me, especially at this time in my life. So please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in my next one.